Well, uh, Bill, if you wouldn't mind, uh, based on kind of how I introduced the call here, uh, can I get your thoughts on precious metals at the moment? Yeah, it's an extraordinary time. I've never seen such suppression in, in uh, the 20 years I've been doing this in terms of the, you know, yes, gold's gone up. Something has only been let down like one day in three weeks, but the gains are minuscule. The gold open interest on the COMEX, was the short and long positions of traders, has gone up like 100,000 contracts in two weeks. The gold cartel, as we call it, the bullion banks and the government, are going bonkers to stop the price from going above 1320. Silver is the worst acting market I've ever seen in 40 years. Uh, it uh, can't even stay above 17, which is one third the price it was 38 years ago. All other assets are flying. Whether you know it was Bitcoin last year, as you all know, and and the stock market just soars every day. And other assets, art, real estate, are flying. And gold's at this pitiful price, and uh, they're just trying to do everything they can to keep their control intact. And that, don't get me wrong. I think gold and silver are just going to go berserk and explode when this gold cartel, as I call it, we call it, blows up. It's just I've never seen such suppression concentrated in such a short period of time. And it's going to end, but it's very frustrating for someone who watches it all day long like I do. Hmm. Well, you know, it's kind of an interesting dynamic here going into 2018. The market seems to be getting stronger if you listen to the the mainstream news outlet and uh to a certain degree we're seeing some strength with the jobs and uh gdp looks like it's going to be as high as it's been in, in a while and this is traditionally not super positive for gold uh but in light of that i know you're not you're not super excited in terms of what we're seeing with gold with its minor moves we are seeing some strength in gold in the face of what is seemingly a stronger market. And usually gold is a safe haven type of asset. So, I mean, any comments as to the dynamics of the yeah, quote-unquote strong? Yeah, a good point, and that's absolutely true. At the same time, the dollar is under a lot of pressure. You have to wonder if things are so, so good in the United States in, re in real terms. Why is the dollar acting so poorly? terrible uh, and then as i mentioned earlier you've got oil that's you know took out 64 dollars a barrel it doesn't seem like there's much resistance you know it's four-year highs till until it gets to 80. it's it's and it's just that gold and silver are the cheapest assets in the world and they they should be much much higher than they are they would be if this gold cartel can be overrun at the time being as i said earlier they are going all out like i've never seen to stop these markets and do i think they're both going to explode and when silver gets above 21 it's going to go absolutely bonkers absolutely uh, very much so it's just frustrating to see them go into action like they are yes what the heck we, we've only had one or two down days in three weeks in gold but it's it just it's so labored and you know gold should have been blown through 1400 by now right well, I mean, I, I, I know what you mean. And, you know, having watched the most recent bull market in Bitcoin, I mean, we got used to seeing $100 moves and more. I mean, I think we've seen some $1,000 moves in a, in a day in Bitcoin. And it's almost made us numb to, you know, a $10 move in gold, which, you know, is that's what we've gotten used to getting excited about right you know and, and you know when it's a hundred dollars it's like the biggest deal in the world but that's really what we should be seeing and uh, that's what i'm gathering from you eventually this should just burst open well and, and that's a very good point i re recall a year ago i was at a jeff Berwick conference and the bitcoin people were excited because gold was bitcoin was 1240 at the same price as gold and I was like, got all disgusted. And they were like, these guys, these guys are so excited. And of course, that's nothing compared to what it is now. It's, you know, a thousand percent higher than that. And good for them. And it, to me, it just shows how much an outside the market vehicle, uh, uh, or, or what it's done, how much gold and silver are suppressed. This is how bad the situation is in terms of what this gold cartel has done. And they are going to blow up. And if I'm correct, when silver, when they lose control of silver, which to me is their kryptonite, you're going to see silver trade in similar fashion to a Bitcoin once it blows through 21. Hmm. 
Uh, yeah, good point on that. Um, okay, well, Bill, let's talk then about uh, some of the the mining shares. We're starting to see some moves in the mining shares, and is this indicative to you of strength with the metal? A lot of times, the mining shares move ahead of the metals. Well, you know, you had the HUI uh, uh, took out a uh, you know a triple bottom. And it looked horrendous uh, just a few weeks ago. And, of course, it was a false breakdown, which is the best kind of thing for a bull market. And then, you know, it's, it's rallied straight back up uh, to the 195 area or whatever. And, and uh, it's been very quiet. The problem is there's still not much excitement. It's, it certainly is a good change of pace from what we've seen. But if you look at the, at the HUI over the past year, it's, it's really nothing. And when you compare it to other other stock prices and that's part of the problem in my opinion is that we have a relative issue in the sense of what as i mentioned what other assets have done hmm. and it's it's completely you know uh you know it should not be and it will change but they're trying to keep things under control and i think the gold silver sh shares will be one of the great investments of, of all time at these levels and as also that the risk reward ratio in buying physical gold and silver at these levels is as good as it's ever been in history. Hmm. Doesn't mean we can't go down. It just means the upside is so extraordinary compared to uh, the downside. Even with all this suppression, it's a great time for you know investors to be looking at some of these beaten up shares. And by the way, if I may add. At the turn of the century, some of these gold and silver shares, the smaller ones, exploration ones and juniors, traded almost in similar returns from bottom to top as a Bitcoin did. I know that's hard to imagine, but I mean, not quite as much, but they were extraordinary. Ones that went from a half a penny, a penny to $3 and so on. Sure. You know, it, I think it was probably easier to disregard Bitcoin when, you know, the market cap of either Bitcoin or the entire market cap of the cryptocurrency space was a couple billion dollars and say that there is really no diversion of attention. But, I mean, we now have the cryptocurrency space approaching a trillion dollars in total market uh, valuation. And I'm just wondering, do you, it, along with the manipulation of precious metals, do you think a lot of people are being sidetracked uh, from putting their money into precious metals because of the Bitcoin sideshow? No question about it. Uh this is many of the reasons what Bitcoin has done to cryptocurrencies is why many of us are we're gold and silver in the first place to be out of the, the system with all the money that that's flowing flowing into it. And again, as I said, you know, good for those people. And so for the it's short term, it's taking uh, you know getting it's getting all kinds of attention and has, I think really hurt the precious metal sector. However, if I may, I think. It's going to be a big boon as this year goes on in the sense that the momentum traders that have made so much money in that sector and in, in other assets are not going to be afraid to jump all over gold and silver once they get moving because that's where all the money's been made by momentum guys. And they won't be afraid to jump in gold and silver so that uh, when it gets really gets going, it can keep going like these other assets have and be the major problem for what I call the gold cartels ability to keep this suppression going so a short-term negative medium-term big positive yeah you know what it's a good point because a lot of the sound money people uh have been enriched in in a certain way and most of them are very bullish precious metals it's not it's not one or the other. Many people that I talk to are diversifying into precious metals because they they do recognize that the cryptos have gone up a lot and they're they're more speculative and they're diversifying into precious metals. And it could be said that the, the sound money community has been enriched and the flow of money to go into the precious metals is on the sidelines waiting to to really flood in. Well, yes, and you know, it was your mentioning, so I don't sound <laughs> like, like, like an angry old man here, is that the setbacks in gold, they're all being bought. And it's a very good sign that, you know, they've, they've been trying to get the gold market down, and it hasn't worked. They won't let it go up, but they've been unable to, you know, to, to get the price uh, any lower, which is why we're at, you know, recent highs for this move. 
so it's it's a big struggle. It's just that the prices should be and will be much, much higher than they are now. Hmm. All right, Bill. Well, is there any sort of optimism that you see breaking down in the gold cartel in 2018 do you think cryptocurrencies is helping that is it, is it possible that you know they kind of well, they kind yeah i think some of the momentum trades will come there and i think the realization of how cheap gold and silver are uh is just going to become more blatant as this year goes on so i'm extremely optimistic of what is to come and my guess is, and it's just a guess, is that we're not going to have a gradual bull moves like we've seen in the past in gold and silver. It's going to explode this time. And that's because the gold cartel, as I call them, is going to be overrun. And all this suppression nonsense and what we're seeing, uh, like today, for example, with you know gold up a couple of bucks, it breaks above 13, 20, they stop it. Silver can't get above 17 with every outside factor. It's incredibly bullish. That's going to change. And when that changes, it's going to be quite something, I think. Hmm. All right, Bill. Well, uh, 